One beautiful day, Thomas arrived at Kildane. He was told by the fat controller to work on the pedagogic branch line for a couple of days. Thomas was puzzled, but when he arrived, he found the answer. James was pulling some of the engines out from the sheds and onto the main line. What's going on? Asked Thomas. Don't you need all those engines, sir? He said to the manager. Well, yes. All of them have been sent to the works to be checked over. What happened? He asked. Well, thanks to the military, all my engines suffered damage, and the fat control kindly has sent some of you over to run the line until they come back. So, which engines? The manager spoke out. You and Douglas will be taking care of the passenger trains, while James and Stepney will be handling the goods traffic. Thomas smiled. I don't think James is gonna like that, and he was right. Why do I have to work on the branch line? Why can't Henry do it? Well, you know, James, I'm too heavy. Besides, you're light enough to go on the branch line. Well, at least you got Douglas to work with you and Stepney and Thomas. Yeah, but still, I want to pull passengers. Why Douglas had to do it? Well, the manager's orders. We had to follow it. Anyway, here's your train, James. Hope you enjoy. Yeah, I definitely need more than that. As James went down the branch line, he was impressed about how things had changed since he last went down there during the time when electric diesels run it. Hmm, I'm surprised that that's now run by steam engines and diesels. I wonder what happened to all these electric engines. He wondered to himself. James arrived at Peel Godric, and pushed his train into a siding out of the way. On his way back, he noticed some narrow gauge track running beside the station. He knew it's narrow gauge, but they were a lot smaller, too small for engines like Scarlowy Reneas. James was curious, and decided to head back to inform Thomas Stepney and Douglas about it. He returned to the sheds that evening, and went into one of the burbs that didn't joined up with Thomas, Stepney, and Douglas. James, you don't want to、uh, sleep with us? No, thank you. I rather be in my own area. Thank you very much. I can't believe I had to work dirty trucks on a branch line. Is he always like that? Stepney asked. Well, not really. It hadn't been. Well, it all started since that he'd been working on Edward's branch line for about two days or so, and even on my branch line, he didn't like it at first. But he soon appreciated the importance of branch lines. Well, that's mostly for mine rather than Edward's. I, I can't really remember what happened that he if he had worked on the Little Western, it would be dreadful. Well, don't remind me that Douglas said James. Anyway, do you notice those small narrow gauge tracks that run beside the Pugodrick station? They look too small. Oh, you're probably meaning the Arlesdale railway, the minimum gauge railway. Those were the very weird engines I said to you, James. They actually take ballast, but they also carry passengers. From what I heard, they're having an extension to this line. It used to be occupied by the Mid Soldo Railway in the early years before it closed in the nineteen forties. Huh? I never heard of that line. And from what you said, minimum gauge? You mean it's very small than the narrow gauge railway? Of course. I know that too," said Thomas. "I visited there once. I think about a couple of times、uh, recently, to help out with the extension, delivering supplies. Huh? I never see one for myself. That's preposterous." Well, well then, will you want to see for yourself? Said Douglas. Now let's get some sleep. Good morning, James. You're bright and early today. Yes, I'm off to the top station very fast to see those very weird engines Douglas mentioned. Very weird engines? You don't mean the one that's on the Little Western? Exactly. I'm going to see for myself. Ah,、uh, don't look at me, Henry. Is Bob probably wanted to see if it's true or not? Hmm. Okay. 
Say, Thomas, do you seriously have to bring Annie and Claire? Oh, oh yes. They miss my company. Oh, okay. James had cleared Kirk Marken until he was stopped by a red signal. Looks like we came here a bit too early, James. We're gonna have to wait first. Oh, come on. I won't get to see those minimum gauge engines. Or whatever that Douglas said. Oh, hello there. Is it James, was it? My name's Cody. I'm a mountain engine. A mountain engine? Yes, I remember now. You came to the shed while on your way back on this railway. Yes, indeed. And I see you're pulling trucks. Yes, and I usually like to pull coaches. James was embarrassed and quickly raced off once the signal changed. James arrived back at Peel Godric and leave the trucks behind and ready to turn around to head back before Thomas arrives with his passenger train. Hello there. You must be one of the engines running the line. Good day. Eh? James blinked. Standing beside him was a small red engine. Where you came from? asked James, surprised. I, well, I only just got here. My name is Mike. I'm an Allsdale engine. You must be James. Donald and Douglas told me everything about you. Nice to finally meet you. Uh, hello? Um, well, you never seen me like this size before. Typical engines. Usually, Donald and Douglas like to have an opportunity of calling us Velo Wee Engines, thinking we're magic. Although it's not really true, you're only just pulling your wheels. Those Scottish twins. You know, from what I heard from those two, they told me about an engine who had an accident with some coaches and had to use a leather bootlace to patch up the... the the brakes wire something. James was furious. That is not funny, you toy engine. Mike was taken aback. A toy engine? I may be that way, but I'm really useful. Useful? Huh. How can you be very useful? And that James stormed off. Mike was furious. Especially when Thomas came up. Can you believe that red big engine? Said Mike. Oh, you mean about James. Oh, he's always like that. He can be a bit boastful sometimes, and can often tries to defend himself too much. Well, he seemed to be very offended when I mentioned him about the, the leather bootlace incident, the ones the Scottish twins told me. Oh no, that engine is James. No wonder why that he was so cross. He doesn't like that to be reminded of. He felt embarrassed. It was one of his worst moments in his in his life. Really? Yes. Two days later, Douglas was taking some empty coaches up to Peel Godric, where some passengers would be waiting for their non-stop run back to Kildane. He stopped at the signal and met up with Cody. Is it Donald or is it Douglas? Well, I actually am Douglas. Say, Donald told me everything about you. Well, it's finally nice to meet you, Douglas. How's Donald? Very good. He's at the works right now being repainted. Very soon I'll be having one too. Further up the line, James was coming down with some empty flatbeds. He left just in time as the drawbridge went down. He was supposed to slow down when he once crossed over it, but because he was such in a bad mood for what happened the earlier encounter with Mike, he wasn't paying attention of his speed. Once he coasted down, he realized he was going too fast. Too late, he came off the rails and blocked both lines. James, said Douglas, what are you thinking? Now you blocked the line. The station master informed the manager about it, and he was worried, especially when the passengers began to mumble and grumble. We need to find another way to get past, and since both lines are, are blocked. Maybe I could help, said Rex. Uh, thank you, Rex, but we do need a bigger crane. Uh, not exactly, sir. Uh, the Arlesdale line does run past to Kirkmarken. And if maybe I could bring some coaches over, then I could... The passengers can travel on the Arlesdale line, then they meet up with the, uh, with Douglas's train at, at Kirkmarken. How about that? Splendid idea, Rex. Thank you. Thank you for helping out in a situation like this wasn't long until Jane was put back on the rails and raced back to Kildane Station.
he was worried of what would the fat control and the manager would say. And indeed it did, when they were waiting at the platform. I am not pleased from what I heard about the incident. But, however, I will have to leave it to the fat controller since, since you're his engine, and not mine. Yeah, exactly, James. You should be more careful right now. But fortunately, the passengers were able to get around your um, accident thanks to those small engines. They are really useful. Won't you agree? Why, well, kind of, yeah. Yeah. Douglas was right. They are much more than like wee engines. Hmm, yes. We better take you back to the shed and hope you can get some rest before tomorrow and the rest of the days onwards until the engines come back. James backed down onto the shed, and Stepney took over his trains as well as his own. Now he became much more aware of his attitude towards the fellow wee engines next time.